Hello, and welcome to the Z Hut. I'm Jay, and this is episode two of Getting Started with SDR Radios, which is also the SDR means software defined radio. Now, in this episode, we're going to be taking a look at the software needed to run this. And uh, in the previous episode, of course, if you haven't seen that, you might want to check it out. We looked at uh, what you would want, what I recommend for getting started. Because just buying the dongle itself or getting the dongle with that little teeny tiny antenna that some of them come with, you are probably going to lose interest in this really quick because you're not going to pick up a whole lot of stuff. With these small radios, it's the antenna is going to be doing most of the work for you. Not these little receivers. And with that little antenna, especially being inside, you're not going to pick much up. You're going to most likely get your FM stations, your broadcast FM, weather radio, and maybe some two-meter ham radio if you got local. Most of your... Uh, your police stuff is no longer um, analog, it's all digital, so you need the trunkable, which is a future episode. You might pick up some fire and stuff like that, but check that episode out, because otherwise you're not going to have much fun with the SDR radio, unless you just want to pick up AM, FM stations and weather. But um, with this software, and we're going to be uh, checking out the one I recommend here, it's called SDR Sharp. And it's uh, released by AirSpy, and it is 100% free. That's the nice thing about it. Plus, it's one of the better programs out of all of my phone. And in later episodes, when we get into like getting images from the uh, weather satellites and the trunkable radio and all that stuff, we are going to be able to still use this. But what we do is we use a virtual cable, which is a program that will take the audio from this and make it an input to another program so we can use this program to control the SDR radio and for checking lots of stuff out you'll be able all your ham frequencies um, air traffic all that stuff you'll be able to do all that on just with this program it's just when you get into the more advanced stuff where you're decoding digital you'll have to pipe it from that program to another but later episodes so I'm we'll quit talking about that for now we'll just get to it so what you need to do is you need to go to, let's see here, I'll bring it up this page. Well, actually, you want to go to airspy.com. I'll show you. I accidentally had it clicked. And this is the page you'll come to. You just put in airspy.com. It'll bring you here. Click download. Then right here, you want the Windows SDR software package. That's if you're using Windows. If you're using Linux, or uh, I don't know if they have Mac on here or not. It doesn't look like they do. It looks like this is just Linux or Windows. So sorry if you're a Microsoft user, Apple. This probably ain't going to work, but um, I only use Windows. Um, I played around with Linux a little, but not much. But uh, yeah, for Windows right here, you want to just download this. Then after you download it, um, you want to extract it. Now, do not plug your dongle in yet, because if you do, it's going to try to install some drivers. They're not going to be the right drivers, and it could complicate things. If you already did, I would go in the system restore and just back your computer up. I mean, hopefully you just put it in. It hasn't, you know, you didn't plug it in a month ago, and now you're figuring out how to use it. Otherwise, you might be, you can still do it. It's just you might run into a problem, so... Don't plug it in yet. Then, after you download that and unzip it into a folder, don't open it up yet and try running it because it won't work. Then you need to go to this page here. Um, this is www.rtlsdr.com. Right here, this address right here. And on there, you want to go and click on the software. And it's RTL SDR, and that's most likely, I'm assuming you have it, if it's any of the RTL SDR radios, this will work. If it's a different particular radio, check that uh, manufacturer's website, or you can also go back to AirSpy and check on there. They've got some links and stuff. But most commonly, and these are the, the more affordable, less expensive ones, are the RTL SDR radios. 
And you scroll down, and as you see here, SDR Sharp is the first one that they even have listed. And this is the program you just downloaded. What you want to do is just go here to the Quick Start page. And what this does is it shows you how to install the driver. The driver is in that folder that you do just downloaded and unzipped in the last step. But what this does is a little tutorial, and it's not very complicated at all. Just follow it. It took me like two, maybe three minutes to go through and do this. Just follow these directions. I'm not going to run through it because I already have it in, and their directions are very straightforward and easy to follow. And it's just a couple of simple steps, and it's done. And then after that, yeah, you got it all done. I would recommend restarting your computer. But then we can go and open up your SDR Sharp. Then make sure right here in this tab, you'll have all the different types of radios. And as you can see, this works with a lot of these SDRs. And just make sure you got the RTL SDR USB selected because most likely that's what you have. Now this is the interface. I'm gonna go through the basics of this really quick. Um, there's a lot to it and the best way to learn everything is playing with it. But what I'm gonna show you is just the basics to get you started so you can start listening to stuff and having fun with it. So like I said, make sure you check that first. It's the RTL SDR, then you'll hit play. Now, I'll turn this up a second. South wind 5 to 15 miles per hour. Chance of precipitation 60%. That is over the SDR radio. I'm receiving, this is the weather, the weather band, the NOAA weather. Um, I didn't want to go to the FM stations just so I didn't, somebody didn't try to put a copyright issue on me for scrolling over and hearing some copyrighted music playing. But I'll show you here in a moment. It does pick those up. But we're in narrow. FM band, if you're on the broadcast uh, FM, the radio stations, you'd want to be on the wide FM. But then you also got AM, lower side band, upper side band, raw, which is pretty much noisy and just, it's just raw. <laughs> this is the best way to describe it. Uh, you got CW and then the DSB, I do believe that's for some of the digital stuff. I'm going to have to look up what that means. I'm not sure, but I do believe that's digital. Now, when you first open this up, and the first time you open the program, if I do remember, it's in the FM broadcast band. But you're going to want to click on this gear here to configure, because this will be all the way at zero. And I'll turn this back up. You will hear nothing but that. Static, no matter where you go. Because when this starts up, the RF gain is at, z at zero, zero dB. Like I said, you click on this little gear right here. It brings this up. And uh, just be careful, depending on where, what frequency range you're in, you might not want to turn that up very much because you'll start pulling in lots of just junk. I would only run the gain as high as you need to. Right in here, it's looking like if I go just a little under half, I mean, I'm getting really good signal. All right, now that's one thing. Another thing we have while we're over here is you got your squelch. That means you can turn the squelch up to where when there's a signal, I'll just bump off frequency here a little bit. You can hear the static. I'll turn the squelch up until that goes away. Right there is about in the 60s. You want to turn that up so it just goes away. Now remember, in different frequency ranges, you're going to want to play with this because you're going to have different squelch settings. But then I will go back over. Highs in the lower to mid 80s. Look at that. South wind. But then if I get off the station, you don't hear all the static. And here's another weather station here. This one's a little further away from me. I'm going to go back to that one. Oh, another thing up here, this is center tuning, which keeps your tuner line right in the center. Otherwise, you can do this where you can move it around. See, there it goes. 
so you're not just in the center. Now right here, this red line, that's where you're tuning. Now we're in a narrow FM. If we go to wide, it makes it wider. When we get over to the broadcast FM, you'll see where that comes in, but you can also shrink that for how wide or narrow you want to receive. But still on narrow band, it doesn't work very good. And it's pretty much just your broadcast is going to be, be the wide band. All right, one more quick thing. Over here, when you first open this up, your range is going to probably be all the way up like that or somewhere in there. I can't remember for sure. But as you see, you've got all this space here. This is just the static, and it's taken up all that room. By adjusting the range, you can pull it down so that you're not seeing all that static down there for no reason, and you've got a the full amount up here to see. Then down here you got your waterfall and that you have a contrast adjustment so you can it's kind of adjusting it how you just like to see how the waterfall looks. It's just a different represent, representation of what the bar graph up here is. It's Honestly I don't really even normally look at this down here. Then you have an offset. Um, I actually don't even use that. Um, and there is a way to calibrate your device if it's off just a little bit. Um, there's tons of videos on how to do that with AirSpy here, or SDR Sharpen, excuse me, is what it's called. So I'm not going to take up 10 minutes of your time showing you how to do that. If you need to calibrate your device, you notice it's off frequency just a little bit, do the YouTube search for that. There's tons of videos. Then one last thing here, you got to zoom, and that just narrows in the, the amount of the frequency range that you see on the screen, so you can zoom in if you're looking for weak, really weak signals. All right, um, with that, pretty much everything else I'd leave it up to you to play with. Um, before we go though, I will, oh and you can use your mouse button if you scroll over one of the numbers here, you can use your mouse scroll wheel to change ch stations and here we are is now in the wideband and notice it automatically goes to the normal mode for the frequency range you're in but yeah these are different stations and I'm gonna unfortunately turn that down so I don't get a copyright issue but you see the wideband is a lot different than the narrow but each one of these spikes is a station so there we go. Um, all right. Well, the next episode. Oh, um, one last little thing. I have been connected to uh, my TV antenna for this whole episode because I'm in the house. In the next episodes, we're going to be using actual antennas for band specific, like two meter antennas and see what all we can pick up and what other frequency ranges you pick stuff up on. The TV antenna, I'm not really picking a whole lot up. I can't rotate it either. I just get um, the normal FM broadcast stations and I get the weather radar and I can pick up my local repeater which isn't very far from me on two meter. But yeah, in the next episode we're going to start looking at antennas. Um, I think we'll skip over the TV antenna. You can try playing with it. You're not going to get a whole lot. I imagine at night time you might be able to pick up a little more stuff don't know, but we're going to start playing with some uh, um, store-bought antennas and some homemade antennas and looking at how you can put long wires and dipoles together, um, simple beams. Um, I mentioned in the last episode, there's a way to make uh, Yagi antennas, which is a beam antenna, out of tape measure. It's a cool little antenna. They're small and they're collapsible, so you could bring this with you with a laptop, portable. So, all right, well, I'm going to wrap this video up. Make sure to subscribe. Um, the next episode will be coming out in a few days. I'm going to try to do two, three episodes a week here on the SDR. As long as I'm trying to get some more episodes going on the Arduino boards and the other electronics I do. So, All right, well, thanks for joining us here at the Z-Hut today. I hope you have a great day, and I hope you have fun playing with your SDR radio.